Right guys, so on this one, I'm going to show you how I did this detail all the way along and the whole length of this wall and just up that side as well. Uh, so I'll show you everything I did here to, to get this in. Um, but just before we go go too far here, just wanted to quickly clear up a few wee questions and things with um, a couple of subscribers and comments and stuff I was getting. So basically underneath is a black wall and this side here in particular, I didn't build all this so I scudded it. Which is this coat in here, bring us in, that's this coat. And somebody was asking me how strong it's supposed to be. And that's, it's really, really strong guys. And you, you can't break it with your fingers. Even the next day, it was as strong as that. Um, but two days, it'll have full strength. Again, scratch coat, very similar. Very strong, can't even break. Can't, can't even break off the wee flaky bits. Um, and this is it's my mixes and um, what I do for the last God knows how many years and um, don't know how many years the guys in front of me who taught me did it. So it's going back a while. But again, I'm in a possibly a different location than some people, so different areas will need different different tactics and um, different different weather. It's gonna have different solutions. Um, but like I always said, you don't have to follow all my mixes and everything I say and do to to the word and to the letter. You know, you can do your do your own thing, guys. What's working for you? But you can see here how I'm getting on, and I'm not gonna waste any more of your time here. I'm gonna get onto this video. I hope you enjoy it. Hello, my grasshopper. And. If that's a cricket, I stand corrected. Right, so first things first, I gotta mix some satin cement render. This is actually scratch coat. I've got in here, I think it's about three, I don't know if it's three to one or three and a half to one, as I need to build out an area that I've made a bit of a mistake on, which I'll show you here shortly. And you may be wondering why is the water white, I've got a wee splash of SBR in it, to kick it off, it'll, the SBR should set render up faster, or concrete, or screeds, it should set it up faster, um, the downside to that is, it's less working time, but that's the reason I have it in, it's also waterproof, and it'll help it bond, so it has lots of added factors as well. And you can notice that I'm using a battery power drill here before I speed up the video. I'm using a battery power drill and a different whisk on it. I'm not even sure this whisk is for a render. I think it is, but because it seems to be doing a great job from that is just the ingredients in, and I think it only took four minutes for me to get this render mixed. So just sped it up here, just so you can see the final mix and what I'll be working with. Um, it's the consistency I want. If you know, you can always mix things to the consistency that you find best for yourself. This is my wee mistake. Put two wee bands on here, and the bands were measured out just just to the timbers. And what I found was it, it threw the lens off, and I think the lens were slightly off plumb. Um, but they weren't symmetrical, so I noticed this when I did the bands, this one band ended up bigger. So I knew I was going to have to do this, so just built out one side, as it's a lot easier to build out than it is to chip off the other side, as, like I said previous, scratch coat's strong. Does render look better sped up, guys? I think it kind of looks class, but let me know what you think. Scoop of dye. Anybody guess what that wee lid pot is off? And um, well, I guess you'll never guess the flavour. So the reason putting the dye in, in the mix is 
I'm trying to create a nice brown colour. Originally I was going to do this in a golden colour, try and get some white cement and stuff and try and get a nice golden brown, but then I thought I'll try and get a dark brown instead. That's the two up close. Um, as you can't really see it that much, you can see one's a bit greyer and one's a bit browner, but it's hard to pick the colours out. Just wetting down the background slightly, don't want to soak it, as if you notice that button I have on, is quite a bit of depth. Anybody wanting to know that drill has already mixed two tubs plus that bucket in dyes with one bar. It's detail time now, and hope you are enjoying the video so far, and really enjoy the detail that I've done. So, with the the depth of this button, you can't do it all in one go. You might be able to do it in small areas, but in long areas, I would recommend you build it up in two stages. You get a bit of a, a butter coat on, and then get your top coat on. That's why I haven't wet it too much. It's actually a warm day, so it's not too bad that way. But I wanted the wall to soak in the first coat slightly as well because I knew my top coat then going on would also further hydrate it. You may also want to mix mix this mix up that bit stiffer. But I'm working in such an awful way, are you? As if some of you have seen that coping stone, you know there's a wee lip underneath for a bit of a drip to stop the water running right round. And I'm trying to work up right onto that. So I hope you appreciate the awkwardness of my work here. But if not, oh well. <laughs> Getting on well here. Almost out of the first butter coat done of my brown render for detail. And now on to the second coat. So it starts really taking shape when you're getting the second coat on. And what you'll notice, guys, if, as long as your buttons aren't soaking, and I haven't used a release agent on these, I just scrape them down, being very brave. A lot of people would put a wee bit of oil on them, a bit of cooking oil, or a bit of baby oil, or a bit of something. A bit of butter probably work too. But um, yeah, I've just scraped them down. Not too worried about on a, a good few times, so I'll show, show you me stripping that rule off at the end of that button. See, ya, see how hard it goes if any falls off or not. Um, but yeah, it takes shape when you get the top coat on. Um, always be careful when you're looking around the end, you don't chip your, your trowel, especially if you're using a skimming trowel. This trial here it is a random trial, so probably never will use it for skimming. But what you'll find when you're coating areas like this is, like I said, if the button's gonna dry, it will take a bit of moisture out of the render, and also the wall and the heat of the day as well. So doing this depth, I'm not worried about any slumps. I'm just happy enough. Everything's. Everything's as it should be, and I'm pretty happy with that. You don't want to be hanging about all day with something set up, but at the same time you don't want it to dry too quick, and then it may cause shrinkage, cracking, and big plaster. So happy medium, and just working off the bottom. Want to make sure the bottom edge is fully filled as well. Don't really want any voids underneath that bottom. And I'm also trying to make sure I've got a good lot of pressure up onto the coping stone as well to make sure it doesn't fish mouth at all. If anybody's done a lot of rendering you'll know what I'm talking about about a wee fish mouth. I tend to find that with people that do swirly scratch coats. But that's that will be another video. I wanted to take a wee second to thank everyone who has donated to the charity video I've done and the two charities that I had done the videos for so big thanks to everyone who did donate that and I'm gonna be thanking this again in a future video and the, them charities are still open and will remain open for a long time now that you have your second coat on 
it's just time to straighten and if you remember back to when I did my scratch coat I really straightened the top of this wall so this is where it's playing in the med voltage now and I'm able to fill my slacks and I know my rule is pretty straight I also have checked it with a straight edge but it's pretty flat and straight as well so it makes for easier straightening there's no big bellies in my rule it's sitting on nice and flat and you can see it's straightened up nicely. I like to try and leave it open when I straighten it, um, especially on detailed work like this, anything that's going to be heavy. If you leave it open like so, it will add the air in behind it. And just using the back of the trowel here as a stuffing put on, it's nice and and easy to cut off. And it's drying out nicely, as you can see, it's time to start getting nice and smooth and flat and this will really set it off and this float here is starting to age a bit I'm gonna have to get another one broke in soon and this float it's it's my favorite so if I ever break it it'll be a sad day but as you can see it's it definitely is a nice float getting it in nice and smooth with Minimal effort, really. Just filling in any holes as it goes there. And trying to stay flush to the bottom. Very important. So, on the right hand side now. And definitely getting on well with it. Everything still going to plan. Sometimes things don't quite go to plan. You might have to try and adjust and adapt to make it start going your way and you'll find that with plastering that not everything goes to plan and you will have to rethink your methods and here we are now just finishing off copying that old timer Sean hopefully he's not watching this me calling him an old timer but he's the first guy I sort of seen using me plastic trowel like this to, to just work it on in that wee bit before he sponged it and the, the, he did it on bands and they were real sharp heavy bands so I'm just using the refined plastic float and sponge to finish off so I probably should call it a plastic trowel just cleaning the bottom of the button these buttons here are a wee bit thicker than the other ones so I allowed myself to slightly go behind but you just tell me guys are you happy with the finish so far uh, but yeah just a small tool up into the the wee awkward parts as well trying to keep the top nice and clean don't want any snatters along the top edge there and definitely did like the uh, refine a sponge float find it pretty comfortable and sometimes that bit better than the car sponges just depends on what I'm doing Again, you don't want to catch a plastic float off them heels or probably might ruin it. Um, these things have been laying about in the van, so I can tell you they're not going to break just too easy, but a chip on them might, might be a wee bit fatal. Maybe hard to get them grinded out, I don't know. I uh, don't want to find out either. So, here we are. Smoothed in ready for further detail so at this stage it was whether the detail goes on top or gets carved in but obviously you just do know the result as it goes on top i did show you as previous you can see the color difference there of the satin cements quite a bit of run to go here and um, once I get it all finished off, just want to keep, you, you really do want to keep that button clean, that edge, so there's no overhangs. As when you go to strip it, you may chip it. So, keep that in mind. So, here's my template for my detail. And um, definitely no joiner. That's for sure. Definitely better with the, the trowel in my hand. Just a bit of scrap wood here and then about just 
decided to use it. Don't like wasting things, so you just probably do see me using things quite a lot instead of throwing them out. And why not get a couple of uses out of them and then throw them out when they're done? Um, you can see, just trying to make two two sort of squares first, and then I have to find all my centers. Do make a bit of a mistake cutting these as well, but and I knew it at the time, but I just thought. I'll, I'll show you in the detail. There's a specific point where it stands out, but it would take a real keen eye to know what's what's going on. And this is me marking out for the arrow tips for the detail. And just finding all the centers so they can work work off and try and keep it nice and margin. Again, if I was doing this again, I would do it. I would have it really precise, really, really perfect. Um, you could actually, what might be easier than what I'm doing here would be a hole saw. You could just drill out the centers. You have seen me do that before with the toolbox that I made quite a long time ago. Um, I'll try and other videos I talk about, I'll try and get them in the description below in case you are interested later on in the video. Or if you want to go on the channel, you can search then videos up and you can see it's coming together and now you can also see what the rain does when it does rain and I have found on this job the rain it definitely picks its moments it seems to want to try and really mess up my plans for my details and if you have watched the previous videos you will really understand what I'm talking about here and the likes of when I was doing rolling the coping stones in the rain's really, really picking its moments, I can tell you that. So, that's my template. And like I'm saying, the wee mistake I made on them, I'll point it out later on. Don't want anybody else pointing it out, so I'll get there first. I'm sure you will still find a way to, to point something else out. But it's with the detail, if I had it in a slip knot, on my string, which I, I didn't bother, it would have kept everything even more precise as what was happening was when I was trying to create some curves and rounds, the string was actually coiling up, which was throwing me that couple of mil off. And, you know, I, di I did adjust it again as well, but I'll, sh I'll show you later on. So what I've done here is I've measured and marked out and give a bit of a scratch coat just for a bit of a key and here's a wee bit of a visual of what the rest is going to look like as the, that end of the wall is completed. As you might remember at the bottom of that wall there was render and I broke my own rules and went over it for a bit of a test for you all and I have recently checked it. We've been getting a lot, a lot of rain. It's still solid, but let's find out what the winter says. So, it kind of looks like I did a lot of work to then just make it dirty and messy again, doesn't it? Kind of a wee bit of, wee bit disheartening looking at it, and but it has to be done. It definitely has to be done. So you can see as well, I've opted on this situation for the car sponge and I'm using a wee point and trail for cutting out a wee small tool. If anybody wants one of them I'll, I'll have that on the Amazon shop as well. There, That one's pretty good. I have better ones than that but that one just looked more comfortable for what I'm doing in this situation. It's a stainless steel one as well and it was not dear. It, pretty pretty cheap actually. I think I got a set of them and the good thing about stainless steel tools I find they clean pretty pretty nicely pretty easily and I've had no problems with that we won't keep it clean. <laughs> so you can see what way I'm using the template how I'm getting on with it and put a bit of a handle on it as well just for extra comfort and grip and it's still quite warm here at the minute so what's happening is 
I'm able to get these on and get them cut. You, you just watched me literally put, put the stuff on and cut it as I go. I don't... I like... The, there's a happy medium with me with what I like when I come to be cutting the likes of bands or coins. I like it to be stiffening up, almost drying, but still has a bit of moisture in it so that it's easier to touch up certain areas with a wee bit more mortar or a bit that's gonna you know gonna be cut off you can scrape some of that and touch up so definitely do do have my timings on cutting what i like to do that's why if you're looking and thinking why not just chuck it all on that's why i like to cut it at a certain stage and if you guys are ever doing bands and stuff you'll find or coin stones you'll find yourselves getting into an area where you you'll prefer to cut it maybe when it's really dry or maybe like myself just just in the middle as it's dry so that is the big reason why i haven't just plowed on so so far so good and there's to be mistake you can see in that one well not that slope but in that detail one one part of the arrow tip just a wee bit lower than the others and you can only see it in the individual you can't see it in the whole once they're all together the the left side corrects the right side but again if it was really i did, didn't mind too much because i knew this i knew that that would be the only area that could be singled out as it's on its own so i have to scratch the end couple so hopefully the depth I'm putting on this will really contrast on the rest of the detail I'm planning on doing on this wall and hopefully you have seen my post on YouTube here and possibly Instagram not sure about what way I drew this wall I drew just quickly a bit of scrap paper just got a bit of an image out of my head on a bit of a paper and you know hopefully this is looking like what i drew but or better hopefully better hopefully i'm a better plaster and ranger than i am uh an artist of drawing but definitely do enjoy doing this type of work as you've seen with the brick effect render and hopefully hopefully it shows in the video hopefully you enjoy these videos and we'll continue to enjoy them and again thanks for subscribing to all my subscribers and to everybody who watches all the new videos as soon as they come out i really do appreciate all your support and comments and likes they're definitely push me on keep me going so does some of the hate as well believe it or not so uh, don't mind a bit of bit of that but i do prefer the nicer comments but let me know what you think guys what do you think of this type of detail um is it your cup of tea is it not your cup of tea um but you know let me know what you thought what what would you have done different what would you have liked to do in one stage i was thinking of cutting doing a high one and then carving in to a low one but then i, I wasn't sure how that would look in my mind i couldn't really get it right how i would join up so i opted for this stage just go out proud and um, stuff's going pretty solid but yeah that one that one doesn't doesn't bug me that much because i knew about it but when they're all together the left side will correct the right side so if you're ever doing things like that keep keep that in mind kind of look like me shoulders as well as our tips and um, would you have done a different color would you have done a red or just cap it cement color see that side drying out well let me know what you would have preferred if you were doing it and um, do like the, the close-up shots of it and it does take time detail takes a lot of time anybody doing bands and stuff and coins will, will know this but this is also a test because things if i like things on this believe it or not i'll possibly do it on the house so 
that would kind of look nice to me under a soffit right along especially with a, a golden dash with a golden dry dash or even a wet dash and what that would potentially do is you would have that smooth area up around the soffit which would stop the likes of wee birds nesting I think there are wee swifts that nest like that well, may, may be getting the, the bird's name wrong, so let me know if I did get that wrong, but are we sparrows or something? I think they, they lay nests up against ice, up on the eaves. So something like that could could not only look good, but stop stop them nesting there because it's too smooth. I think they like the, the stones to build their nest off. But definitely... Just eyeball it off my coping stone there and have measured up as well. If you are doing something like this, you might want to, you know, check every second or third one just to make sure they're all still running in line and stuff of where you want them to be. There's no point getting carried away and then stepping back going, oh dear, redo them last five, you know. So every, every couple you can recheck, stand back, look, does it look right? You know, is it right? Is it plumb? Do you need it to be straight? You know, all all the different things. But definitely do enjoy doing these videos. So hopefully you do. Hopefully you're going to enjoy what's coming up next as well. Some more detail to go to this wall. Um, if you haven't seen the picture, it's on the channel. I think you have to go to the community tab on the channel and you'll see the picture of the end result for this part of the wall you can tell me what you think there or in the comments if if you've seen the picture let me know do you think i'm i'm kneeling it so far or am i not kneeling it and what what do you think about the color i do like the brown this will probably be the only different color the rest probably will be just sand and cement color to just thought this would contrast that bit of different colour and yeah for sure if, if you just want something like this done in your own house and you live local to me give me a shout that's no problem I always get a look at it but I think they look nice when just when you're looking at them side on or step back just detail on detail here at the minute Step back and have a wee, wee stir at them as well. You can see, I still got a nice strip there on my coping stone. Well, not so much on that side, but on that side, it's perfect. And just glad I got good weather for cutting it out. So, as promised, I will strip off my buttons and you just can either see if I, the fact that I didn't grease up my buttons yeah, feels or not. I'm going to start with all the small ones. Um, like I showed you in the previous video, this is a nice wee tip. Just tap it. Don't beat the life out of it. Just give it all a nice tap. Try and drive a wee bit of vibration through it. Sometimes the top is enough to actually loosen the nails, believe it or not. You'll find that they'll come loose. So when you're pulling it off as well, you want to keep pressure with your other hand on the button to avoid one end pulling up. As what that can do is one nail might stay in while the other comes out and it might rip your detail or your bands or your base, whatever it is you're doing, it might rip off a big chunk of it and that's definitely not what you want so keep pressure on it if you've got a bit of a length on get a mate that maybe help you hold one area while you're stripping the buttons to keep, keep it in flush to the wall definitely at this stage you don't want to be making a, a big mess for yourself to try and patch up sand cement does not patch very easy. Somebody was commenting on a video where I was stripping render off saying that it didn't need done that way, it could have just been patched. And yes, I, I do not disagree with him, but to the fact that 
when a customer wants something fresh and new, patterns not not gonna be the best option, especially for sand cement. So, what do you think, guys? There's quite a bit of depth to that, and let me know in the comments. I'd love to hear from you.